Well, look, when you wish for rain, you might actually get it. We just got rained out up here at Miller Canyon. We're not upset about it because we understand the importance of it. We also understand that it may also trigger a lot of insects in diapause or those insects who just require higher humidity and moisture. So rain is a great thing, especially when you're in a drought for a year. So. Arizona can appreciate when it gets it. We're out of here now. We're gonna take this rain and leave it here. We're gonna try and head probably south and drive for a few hours and get out of this to find some more sun and maybe some more insects. So we're gonna get up in the morning and we're gonna pack up in the rain. Casey is going to be our guide for the day. I cannot say enough good things about KC Smith. He lives in Phoenix. He is basically our Arizona team slash tour guide. He keeps our supply caches for us. Uh, he even provided a vehicle for this one. So you can't ask for better people. Casey is just a super, super nice guy. Very honest, very, very knowledgeable. My goodness, the knowledge this guy stacks in his head about local fauna. He travels all over the Southwest. So he's in California and he's in uh, he even came out to Alabama at one point last year and he was collecting some insects so he's expanding his range since his official retirement but fortunately he still chooses to hang with us and be part of our team and we love Casey for everything he does so we're leaving Miller Canyon and we are surrounded by rain the monsoons have come in a little earlier than we were hoping for which is why I generally don't take these trips during the monsoons. We're gonna leave Miller and we're gonna head down out of the canyon essentially and then we're gonna head into Coronado National Monument which we're kind of already in. We're right on the edges of Coronado National Monument. This is a pretty big area. It's full of a lot of different habitat right now all of which is soaking wet because of the storm that hit us and this storm is gonna literally chase us all the way to Nogales. So this entire day is going to be spent chasing puddles and mud, you know, some of which is fun, but it made it kind of tough to find insects, but we still managed to do it, which is the coolest part about the desert is we can be in between storms and as soon as it stops raining, the bugs come out. So as long as we can find environment that's suitable to, to step into and collect between monsoon rain we can usually find bugs and insects and we do manage to do some of that so stick with us because this does get fun you're just going to see a lot of mud and a lot of rain for a little while until we get into some of those areas i come to arizona for the insects i don't catch and kill i almost never kill anything anymore when i'm in the field i got enough dead bugs i don't need more but i'm looking for educational things specifically live bugs and insects, scorpions and, and different things. The entomologists, the insect collectors that are coming out here with the expectation of maximizing the amount of things that they can collect, you know, bring home for their collections, dead, and then mount them, preserve them, is a whole different mentality. They key their activities, they key the insect activity on the monsoons. They want the rain, they want their, you know, they want the rain at night and they want the rain during the day to motivate and get the bugs up moving and that that agitates the the habitat it gets you know instills growth and and flowers to bloom and things like that which pumps the bugs up on the other hand i'm under the ideology that i don't need that i don't need to kill any of those things and i'm not bringing home live butterflies uh, let alone live moths so i'm out here looking for things that really don't like the rain that is the scorpions and the centipedes and the tarantulas they react to the rain, so if I get a little bit of humidity, if there's storms around or nearby, or if I can show up in a, in a canyon a few hours after it rains, that is a great thing. If we can get a light drizzle, that's a great thing, because that will agitate and motivate those, those bugs, those insects, to, you know, even though scorpions aren't insects, they still, it motivates them to get up and move and makes them easy for me to find rather than have to go and flip and dig and and scour and recon looking for things. So I wanna get in here just before those monsoons, which normally is now, um, but this year is a little different. We're getting here at the time the monsoons arrive. It's not hurting us because we're finding all our targets. We're getting the vinegaroons and, and the fun stuff, you know. So it's a good thing to get the rains not only for the desert, but it's also a good thing for us because we're able to hit our targets a lot easier. 
down the canyon. We're out of the canyon now, and we are headed, basically going to climb up the hill into Coronado National Monument. But in that process, at the base of the mountain, we find these cool purple flowers. These turn out to be purple-throated morning glories. Um, I had no idea these things even existed. I know morning glories exist all over the world, but I didn't realize they were such a big deal to particular people throughout the Southwest. Casey absolutely loves these things. They're toxic. I believe they're in the, fa the family Ipomenae or something like that. I'm not real good with plants. Sorry, I do bugs. These things are toxic and they were actually banned for sale throughout Arizona for a, a long time. And now, just within the last two years, three years, I think they've made them legal again. Mostly because they're bad for livestock. And look how beautiful these things are. Every time we found a patch of them, they seem like they were different. Some have the purple inside the throat, some have the purple on the outside, some have the purple along the edges. Super neat flowers. They do attract a bunch of insects, and we did see some beetles and some bees and some things humming around these things, which was kind of cool to, to actually connect and see some of the plants uh, that the pollinators are going to use. Well, that was pretty cool. We go down into the base of the mountain a little further. We come across a big puddle. Uh, we stop at this puddle and we're going to encounter some tiger beetles. In a desert lacking water, that is a great thing. All right. Um, I'm going to assume there's probably going to be some, some cool stuff down here. Uh, Logan's already checking it out. We know that's going to attract birds and probably animals but it's also going to attract insects. Specifically, I'm hoping there's going to be some tiger beetles. We're going to approach this real slow and see what we have. Tiger beetles are pretty cool. They're loved by beetle collectors. They're loved by insect enthusiasts all over the place. And there's bunches of different tiger beetles in Arizona, especially scattered throughout the desert. So we're going to go over here, sneak in tight, and we're going to see if we can see if there's anything. I don't see any butter. I don't see any butterflies puddling. So we're going to hope there's some beetles over here that we might be able to find. I've got beetles, a lot of them. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there are small brown beetles bouncing all over the place here. Those are tiger beetles. I'm gonna try something crazy here. Stay put, Logan, I may need you. I'm just gonna try some crazy sweep netting because there's a bunch of beetles in there and if I can get over top of them when they fly, they'll actually fly into my net. So this is gonna look, this is gonna look kind of kind of goofy, but it works because I've done this plenty of times. I got them. Whoa, look at them all. Yeah, yeah, there's a ton of them. It's the only reason I can get away doing that kind of sweep netting, because the odds are with that number of beetles, they're going to be there. Oh yeah, a bunch of them. Yeah. <laughs> crazy. Yeah, it makes it a little easier when you do that. I just got to get them out without letting them get away, because they're really sneaky. These little guys are escape artists. Fast. And they're super fast. fast. Now this is a small beetle, so it's going to be hard to really see this. But these, I'm not gonna keep this guy either. I'm gonna let this guy go. Now, be honest with you, I don't even know what kind of tiger beetle this is yet. I would have to go in and look and research and find out, because I'm not up on all the tiger beetles that occur in the Patagonia Mountains. But this is a tiger beetle. They call them tiger beetles because they have big mandibles, they chase down other insects, and they are carnivorous, and they are vicious carnivores or carnivores so super cool little beetles see how many more I got in here if they didn't all escape they, nope I think they all escaped and that's okay I just wanted to show you the one yep all the rest got away that's cool I'm gonna I'm gonna do a quick scan I want to see if there's any other types maybe some bigger ones I don't know for sure I'm just gonna do a slow walk around this thing and then we're probably just gonna head on out I don't, I don't plan on keeping any of these I just want to see what's here they're just uh, all right cool Casey I'm coming to you Hang on, Logan, stay put. Well, you know what? It's a bigger one, it's a female. Let me see what I can do. I don't, I'm not even using that. No, you can they can't fly. fly. Good, good eyes, dude. Ha. Yeah. I don't think this is one from, well, it might be from me. I might have I might have winged this one at one point. But, and it's a slightly larger one, probably a female. But notice the wings. A lot of people don't know that beetles can fly. And even if they can't, even if they don't fly, they still probably have wings tucked up under those elytras. And tiger beetles are excellent flyers. They're super, super fast. These are some of the fastest things 
on the planet by their size. Some of, there, that one goes. Cool stuff. All these so far are all the same. And I, again, I don't know what species this is. And I, I might even try to look it up and find out, but I don't know if I really care that much. I'm just gonna try and find you something a little different. Maybe one of the nicer, bigger, brighter color ones if they're here. And he is, to a larger extent, Casey is a classic of the type of people that I try to surround and keep in the, the Bugman LLC circle. It's very genuine people who who are honest, you know, in, in all regards. It's it's just he's just a pleasure to be around. up the south side of the Huachuca Mountains. We're in Coronado National Monument and we approach a lookout area known as Montezuma's Pass. This is 6,600 foot elevation, so it's not terribly high, but it still offers a really cool view of the valley. We're looking into the southwest of the Huachuca Valley at this point. There's some unique pictures laying around. The Choya Cactus was amazing. Uh, we caught the Choya Cactus in bloom and we even found some cool cactus weevils hiding around these things. So again, it's a good example of with the food plant, or in this case, the flowers, the pollen, the things that these insects are after, if it's anywhere around, the bugs find it. Even 6,600 feet up on top of this mountain, we're finding insects on these flowers, so it's pretty cool. I have also pulled cactus longhorns off of those same flowers in the past, so I kind of knew they were there, but wasn't sure what we would find with all the rain being in the area. Super, super neat area. Beautiful views down into the valley. We're going to crest over top. Uh, we're going to leave Montezuma Pass. We're also going to leave Coronado National Monument on the way down the mountain just not too far out of the monument we pulled off to get another view and take some more video of the valley because it was a neat long shot of the valley and logan starts pulling fossils out of the hillside right behind us while we were viewing this is just how cool this area is um something as simple as stopping along the road some random spot and you have just the right kind of dude like logan who loves minerals and rocks and space and all he loves just about everything natural history while we're enjoying the view out in front of us he's back there behind us digging fossils out of the hillside so that was pretty cool because we would have we would have never seen that we would have never even thought about that we were you know we're into bugs we're now down off that mountainside and we're into San Rafael Valley. Uh, this is a beautiful area, really cool area. It was recently, uh, looked like probably within the last two or three years, there had been a strong burn in that area. And this was a strange place because it looked almost like Pennsylvania in the fall where you have bright green grass and then you got yellow and orange leaves on all the trees. And I can't explain why the environment down here does this. I just don't know that much about it, but it is a super super, super beautiful area when you're driving through it. Uh, I wish like crazy it hadn't been raining because it would have been neat to see this thing, you know, bright lit up in the sun like that. So it's neat to have these kind of people on the team. This region is still known to uh, carry again illegal immigrant activity. Again, even out of the National Monument, the further we go down the hillside, we're going to see a strong presence of Border Patrol. This entire area has a really, you know, good population of bear and deer and quartermundis and, and neat birds, lots and lots of different birds. The Quetzal, if you're familiar with birds. Again, I'm not a bird guy really, but at the same time, Quetzals, I do know that one from being in Central and South America. Beautiful birds. They do migrate up into, uh, I assume, Texas and definitely Arizona, probably New Mexico. They're going to occur there. At one point, we stopped and we watched a big storm come through. We're on our way out of San Rafael Valley now, but we're still in the Patagonia Mountains. We got on this big overlook and we literally stood and watched a huge thunderstorm, lightning the whole bunch come down this valley and it was coming straight at us so we had this had a perfect opportunity to sit and watch this happen we were probably there for about 15 minutes just waiting for this to get literally to us to where we would then get rained on so we, we watched this massive monsoon come down the valley totally blind everything out behind it so it was super neat to see that the lightning started getting a little close and at that point we bailed back into vehicles about six or eight inches of mud at one point where we we kind of got a little worried we bogged down but man he knows what he
he's doing. He's, he's keeping us safe. That's the greatest part about having somebody like Casey on our team is that we can rely on him. He keeps us safe as well, going to these places that we don't normally get to go. And we had absolutely no issues getting to these places. If you're looking for some landmarks, Duquesne Road is the main bypass to get to where we're going to go anyway. And needless to say, lots and lots of mud. We're following Casey, and every time we'd see him hit a big puddle, we'd enjoy the moment and hit the big puddle as well. That monsoon over there reminds me, Logan, of a pretty cool, I mean, at the time, I don't think it was cool, but it's cool now. Um, I was collecting probably back in the late 1980s, I was collecting in Guadalupe Canyon, which is just literally on the Mexican border south of here, maybe 50 minutes away. And we were, we were halfway through the night probably one o'clock in the morning and I'm standing in front of a 250 watt mercury vapor bulb. I'm blinded by the light but I'm picking bugs off the sheet because it's a great night and the bugs are coming in. The sheet's black with insects and all of a sudden a big flash of lightning and a big boom and like five seconds later one of those things was dumping down on me. Now three things happen. First there's, there's mild panic because you don't expect that. Then you got to worry about that cold rain hitting that hot mercury vapor bulb and possibly breaking the bulb, shattering the bulb. So the first thing I had to do is I had to grab, because we, we go in prepared, I had to grab what was a big square of tin foil off the ground nearby that we kept handy for just such an emergency. And I'm standing there holding that piece of tin foil over top of the light bulb while a deluge of rain is just absolutely pummeling and soaking me and the sheets and the bugs and I'm I'm trying to save the bulb the guy I was with Lee Gidry, he was, he was in the truck sleeping he had he had no idea this was going on and at the same time I'm trying to protect the bulb the woods the forest around me the the environment are, completely went crazy with insects because when rain comes in that hard all the branches all the leaves all the trees all the all the all the habitat around you is getting completely beat down by rain and that stirs up the bugs even more so I can remember standing there holding a piece of tin foil over a big bright light bulb that's about four inches from my face and now I'm completely surrounded during this downpour I'm completely surrounded whoa Oh, there's dogs running. Completely surrounded. Stay there, puppy dog. Thank you. I'm completely surrounded by this big cloud of bugs and insects and stuff that are flying around me in the middle of a monsoon. And that was truly, and I'm not kidding you, that was one of the best black light nights I've ever had. Um, because by the time that rain settled down that I didn't have to worry about covering up the bulb anymore, Within about 30 minutes, that, that black light sheet that I was standing in front of was, was literally coated and black with insects to where, where finally Lee got up and, and we're both looking. We were picking bugs off of that sheet to see what was underneath those bugs. They were layered on that sheet. It was just an insane night in Guadalupe Canyon. We're pushing out of the Patagonia Mountains um, we blacklit last night and we're being chased out by rain this morning. It hasn't caught us yet, but it's probably going to. Um, that's not a bad thing because we're headed a couple hours west uh, where we're going to try and get into some blacklighting down along Mexico. But while we're leaving the canyon, we're also slow road cruising and we're looking for habitat. The habitat we're looking for, Casey, is mesquite and oak. Right. Okay. Now there's two aspects of that. The mesquite trees. Are important. Why? Well, uh, the, the, on the mesquite trees, you, you find the mega, uh, Megasoma punctulatum, which is one of the uh, group of Megasomas, which, uh, as you know, are the largest beetles in the world. Yeah, bug man kind of bugs. Big, <laughs> cool. All right, that's the stuff I like. Okay, so as far as the mesquite, are they they're feeding on the leaves, or what are they doing? Well, they're they're um, well, they're just crawling uh, it's all all about mating at this point but they're, they're crawling up the, the side 
uh, the male the males are crawling up the side of the the mesquite tree and they get about an area from two feet to oh six feet and then they just wait there uh, for a female and the females fly around and they don't hang out at the trees so they're just randomly buzzing around so yeah so the males are out there with their antenna trying to pick up pheromones and and, uh, and so if you want to try to find one the easiest way to do is go out to the mesquites and uh, uh, and, and wander around looking for beetles. And they'll be right there now, in the are park. Are they flying at a particular height? Are we looking well, They're for... not flying. They're, okay. The males. Well, I'm the talking, males. So the females we shouldn't expect to see yet? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. we're looking for males on the trunks right. waiting for the females. Okay. All right. Um, so the females then mostly fly at night? Yeah. Okay. That, well, same with the males. The males come out right at sunset. Okay. So And then just wait and literally wait on the trunks of the trees. Right. All right. Easy enough because there's a ton of mesquite here. So this is cool. Um, now, what is it about the oaks? It's a big longhorn beetle of some sort. Yeah, the uh, Mega Purper Sinus. Ah, that's a mouthful. Mega Purper Sinus uh, Magnificus. Magnificus. What he said. Yes. What he's trying to say. Big beetles. <laughs> Again, bug man kind of cool stuff. Um, these beetles are gray and red. Black and red. Black and red, black see? And red. So black and red, about that big? Yep. Big. Yep. Um, and the females are like that wide. Yeah, yeah. Oh, awesome. So, are we going to be looking at, tr now we're again, we're talking oaks. So, are we looking at tree trunks or are we looking for flying beetles or what right. are we doing here? Well, with, with the, those guys, now that's uh, a day, the daytime flyers. And from nine to noon approximately, huh. the males are flying around the treetops. And uh, of, of oak trees, though. of oak trees. Okay, so we shouldn't really expect to see them on the mesquite. No, okay, no. So, so, like that oak tree over there would be a good place. Perfect, yeah, perfect. All right, and they, they fly and they found a, find a place on the crown, and, and then they wait for the females. And the females will come out of the trunk uh, and slowly crawl up the tree, and there's their waiting the prince and. <laughs> and um, so the males are at the top waiting on the females to literally crawl well, up the tree right so they mate and then and then the, ma the male uh, well the female actually just kicks them off I watched it tw <laughs> twice uh, last week uh, the female just kicks them away and he goes falling to the ground uh, from the top of the tree pump 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 boosh and uh, and then she just slowly crawls and every few feet she'll lay an egg and she'll get all the way down to near the base of the tree. And uh, by the time she gets down there, she's laid a lot of her eggs, a good portion of her eggs. Cool. All right. So checking oak trees for now. Are the, are the beetles going to be flying at all? So the, 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 the males fly between 9 and noon. OK, good, good. That was where that time frame comes in. All right, cool. Well, we got plenty of mesquite, plenty of oak. So we should be looking for the, the males to be flying, maybe. Mm -hmm. And females are a little iffy whether they, they're yeah, going to be out. They, 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 they fly. After they get down there and they finish laying a good portion of their eggs, then they, they'll fly. And they'll fly lower. They'll be, oh, OK. They'll be flying. Uh, so basically, any big beetles that we see hanging on the, the mesquite or the megasomas, and any big beetles we see goofing around the oaks are going to probably be the big longhorns. Both are super cool, good bugs. <laughs> bug man bugs. So, yeah, man. Let's go look. Let's go. Come on, we're yeah. going to take you guys with us. <laughs> <laughs> While we're searching for the big, cool bug man beetles that we're looking for, the longhorn beetle and that really nice megasoma that Casey was talking about, we're also finding, in this case, in a mesquite, which is key, we're also finding beetle damage. These are holes, exit holes specifically, where beetles dug their way out. Now, we look at the shape of this hole. This tells us a couple things. This is called a D-shaped hole. Even though it's a D over on its side, this is classic of a wood boring beetle, a bupressed, um, specifically a, a wood boring jewel beetle, which is not the same as the scarab beetles that we saw earlier. This is a totally different type of beetle, specific to boring in wood where the adults literally come out of the sides of the trees and leave these cool exit holes. So that tells us that there's a lot more going on in this little environment here 
besides the two beetles that we think we're hoping to find, there's always a chance of finding some other cool stuff too. But these holes, these beetle holes, are another indicator of the variety of the biodiversity that occurs in simple dry mesquite habitat. All right, what we have is a frass tube. Um, this is from a beetle larva, probably the same beetles, those, those wood-boring jewel beetles. We don't really know, of course, but that right there is beetle poop. It's old beetle larva poop from when the larva was actually eating the inside of this this piece of trunk this branch but this is another good sign and also a good example of what's going on inside these mesquite trees with some of these beetles this is an eyed elater look this is an eyed click beetle from the family elater day i want you to notice those fake eyeballs look at the look at those fake eyeballs how cool is the defense on this beetle because think about this man if you go to eat your dinner and you look down at it and it's staring back at you, are you gonna eat it? No, predators do not like being looked at. Fake eyeballs are a great way to stay alive one more day. And the eyed click beetle is an awesome example of that kind of defense. These are not common beetles. This is considered an uncommon beetle. I'm gonna try and get this. I want this for the educational programs. This guy, hopefully, if I do this right, I'm gonna get him and not hurt him. He's gonna educate a ton of people because I know they'll eat fruit because I've had these beetles before. But I want you to get a good look at the eyed click beetle just in case he gets away. Because this is an awesome bug man beetle. Right there. Look at this beetle. He's gonna bite me too, probably, because he has a big set of jaws on him. Woo, there he goes. Look, ah, he's milking me, that's pretty cool. That, yep, that, ooh, that's musky, that smells. That's also, that's a chemical defense, that's pretty cool. But check this out. Now these fly, so, ow, he's biting me. Ow, look at him biting me. Ow! <laughs> ah, it hurts. But that's, that's worth it. We'll, we'll let him get, we'll let him bite me. I, I'm okay with it. I just I just don't want him to fly. Look look notice it notice he flips. See that? He does it all on his own. Watch this. Ooh there he goes. That's also part of their defense. It spooks and scares predators and it allows them to flip over so they don't get caught on their back. Yeah. We're gonna go through Harshaw over to Nogales. The, the reason for going to Nogales primarily was to visit the USDA Border Patrol and Inspection Station at Nogales. This worked out super cool. And here's, here's something that's kind of neat. Martin works for the USDA and Martin does inspection. Now, what he does is identification at this point. Now, he's, he's probably going to move a million different places in the USDA over, over his career. But for the moment right now, he's doing in you know, identification of insects that are, that are collected at the border through inspections, brought to him. He catalogs them, identifies them, puts them into their system um, as possibly even a potential threat, let's say invasives and things like that that are coming through. They then decide if they're going to cut that shipment away and, and refuse the shipment and send it back where it came from, or if they're going to allow it through. He plays a part in that, whereas he, he decides what kind of threat a lot of these insects are. I, I can guess that's part of his job. He has a cool job where he also gets to connect with other border patrol stations doing, you know, the people in the same entomology areas doing the same kind of things. And he connected with a gentleman. Now, visiting this USDA uh, office was super neat. I've never been to a, a facility like this. Martin, it was secondhand. He works at a place almost identical to it. We were immediately told that we're not allowed to take any video or take any pictures inside the facility. We were also recommended, sort of politely recommended to not even take video or pictures from the outside. So we don't have a lot to show you about the place itself. I would have loved to have done that because it was amazing. You know, we went out and looked at the truck docks where the trucks back in and for, install, for uh, inspections. It's very, very cool and very large, much bigger than it looked like from the outside when you pull in. Um, the whole back side of it is all is all border inspection stuff. It's really, really cool. Um, huge entomology 
uh, department. You can imagine the plants, the insects, and all the different departments that are in these things, things that are collected and brought across and need to be inspected. Um, even things down to microscopic stuff, you know, fungi and bacteria that might be coming across. Uh, all of that gets recorded, tracked, traced, inspected, you know, identified. Um, I didn't realize how big a deal these these facilities were until we got there, until I was able to realize how big of a deal Martin's job is. I knew he worked for USDA, and it's a pleasure and an honor to have a guy like Martin and his his, his credentials and his, his ability working on the team and helping me out. Um, but seriously, I didn't realize how big a deal this was to what is in some cases and I don't want to overplay the national security but I do want to I do want to play the security uh, the environmental security of this country so I get that now uh, where I didn't see that before so just something for everybody to think about out there if, if you didn't know these places even existed and if you also uh, weren't really sure how they operated then now you know because uh, it's an imp it's a pretty impressive deal what they what they do down there um, again, I can't give Martin enough credit for what he does. Um, I'm honored to have him on the team. I'm, I'm even more impressed now that I understand exactly what he does for the most part. Uh, and I understand how obviously important it is. So, so man, kudos, kudos to you, Martin. Thank you so much for being part of this team. Uh, I'm never disappointed in, in our team members. Uh, they just blow my mind every time I learn something new. So, our host at the Nogales USDA uh, border station, I guess we'll call it an inspection station, was a gentleman by the name of Jason Box. Uh, super neat guy, uh, really laid back, really genuine, but uh, I liked him. He, he's cool. Um, and Martin already knew him because he and Martin have exchanged information and data, uh, which I assume the stations can do with each other. Uh, to kind of keep on top of things. So they already kind of knew each other. They had that connection, but this is the first time they've been able to meet in person, which was super neat seeing like meetings of the minds coming together, two people from two completely different stations. Uh, Martin's in Texas, he's in Arizona. Uh, these guys get together in the Gallus. Um, and we were there for that meet and greet, which was kind of cool. Um, we got a really cool tour of the facility. We found out uh, what they do. Uh, we got to see the collection that they have on hand, and we got to meet some of the other folks working there. Um, and it's unfortunate we couldn't videotape all that and, and get interviews and all that fun stuff, but that's how it has to work. So, Jason, thank you so much for hosting us. Um, it's awesome to know that uh, he's going to be in Harshaw with us as well. He's going to come out and meet us in Harshaw and hang out with us and blacklight with us. So we'll see him again later tonight in Harshaw. Okay, so we're going to leave the USDA office, but something that that Logan has never seen, the border. Um, we saw pieces of it, parts of it. We saw a wire fence at one point that was the border, um, but we haven't seen, uh, he hadn't seen the actual border wall, and Nogales is, is part of that major wall aspect. So it was, it was neat um, to at least give Logan the opportunity to get down see that, touch that. Let's keep in mind that there's still about a 20 foot space in between. Uh, that, so that wall we're touching is not essentially Mexico. That is not the literal line of the, the two countries. That is about 20 feet this side of the Mexican border per se. So uh, we're on that wall because, you know, he didn't understand how that worked. Maybe some folks here don't either. So just letting you know that wall is not a, is not the actual line border uh, that designates Mexico and the U.S. It, it throws it down and, and, uh, and gives there some a little bit of, of uh, marginal space between the two. We're walking down a sidewalk in the gallows, 100 yards from the border, nothing but concrete and macadam around us. We find a tiny little sprig of Dutchman's pipe coming up out of the ground through a crack in the sidewalk. And on the Dutchman's pipe is a pipevine swallowtail larva. 
And these things, obviously, look at that, look at that caterpillar. It's obviously toxic. It's obviously, it's bright orange to let everybody know that if you eat that thing, it's not going to do, it's not going to do you any favors. It's warning nature that it is toxic. Beautiful caterpillar, beautiful butterflies that these things have. Uh, we'll, we're going to put up, yeah, we'll put up a pic of a plate vine swallowtail. Let's just see what that looks like too, because that's kind of cool. But who would have thought to find a random caterpillar on a single little sprig of Dutchman's pipe in the middle of a sidewalk in the middle of the town of Nogales. Uh, I love bugs. Bugs are, entomology is cool like that because those are the cool little surprises that we encounter. So we finally got Logan down to the wall and checking out the wall. We're goofing around, reaching our hands through and, and you know, having a good time. But Logan got to see the wall and that was important. Um, that's that's a, nice, a nice lifer moment for him. And how you feel about the wall is 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 not important. If you've never seen it, it's still something that, that everybody should at least go and experience. Uh, you have a better appreciation, a better uh, understanding of it, at least in this case. And then when you're in places like the uh, Coronado National Monument and the Huachucas um, and and the Patagonia Mountains, and you realize that those are the those are the same areas that everybody talks about with the the illegals coming through. Um, it, it puts things into a much better perspective. Um, like it, hate it, or you don't, it's still, it's still a fact and it's still an issue and, and the danger is there. So, so we don't ever take, uh, we don't take that, those regions and those areas lightly. When we travel through those areas, we are always on the lookout, uh, and ready to, and ready to get out of there. We, you know, we don't want the confrontations and we want to keep everybody safe. And again, that falls to Casey to do a, such a great job of taking care of us and, and keeping us uh, safe in those aspects. We didn't encounter anything the entire time that even made us feel remotely uncomfortable. Um, it was impressive to see the amount of Border Patrol. Uh, there was always vehicles floating around with, with the Border Patrol vehicles. So um, lots of that activity, but nobody giving anybody a hard time. Nobody, uh, you know, we just didn't see any of that stuff. So super neat. And that obviously keeps these trips a lot more fun so we're gonna arrive in Harshaw with beautiful weather optimum collecting conditions can't ask for better it's like it's like the gods rewarded us for the effort we just put into the day what an absolutely crazy day of mud and rain uh, we got to hit the USDA office phenomenal place and Logan got to see the border, which is a nice experience for him. So we're going to end up in Harshaw with a crew of people. Um, if you've never had the chance to hang out with a bunch of bug guys in front of big bright lights where there's a ton of bugs and insects, that's an adventure in itself. But you know what, man? We're taking you on that one next time. Uh, we're going we're gonna to end this here because it's been a long day. And uh, we can't drag this out too much further, unfortunately. But we're taking you to Harshaw on the next one. Um, stick with us on these because we go from Harshaw, then we go over to, to California Gulch, which is an even more amazing place. A little less known, I think, to a lot of people because it's so remote, not many people can get in there. That is also going to be a huge adventure, getting in and out of uh, that canyon because it's crazy full of water in there. So stay with us for that because that gets to be a ton of cool bug fun. Guys, I hope you're enjoying these videos. I hope you're getting something out of it. I hope you're learning a little bit about what's going on out there. And uh, most of all, having fun with the bug man. Guys, take care. We'll see you. Hey folks, be sure you like and subscribe to what's going on here. If you like this channel, then tap that subscribe button and let us know how much you appreciate it. Get in on some of the comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you feel and offer whatever support you can because we always appreciate everything our fans are doing for us. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Take care.